Hello again, Frank from the Old Town Coleman Center. Welcome to Chapter 2 of Theory of Operation, How a Coleman Lamp, Lantern, and Stove Operate. In the first chapter, we learned how to pressurize and maintain the pressure in our fountain or tank. In this chapter, we'll have a brief discussion on the history of lighting appliances. We'll talk about the fuel and air tube, and then about generating gas. All of this information can be found in my website at oldtowncoleman.com. So go freshen your drink, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. I want to introduce you to a <laughs> Welcome back. I'd like to introduce you to a few new friends that I have here. I'm still using the number 395 hot plate and the 426B three burner stove. But now I've brought out a number 500 A Speedmaster stove that was born in September of 1956, just like my beautiful wife was. This is a Coleman vase lamp, model number 150R. Uh, the shade obviously is not original. I'm still looking for an original shade, but I do have a correct mica shade protector in there. And this lamp uh, is in absolutely beautiful shape, and I can't wait to get it complete. Over here on your right, I have a model 609A iron, a kerosene lamp, model 237. And over here I have a lamp that has absolutely nothing at all to do with Coleman. That is an American gas machine model number P66 lamp. It was made for a uh, lighting supply company in Spokane, Washington. And the reason I have it out here is I want you to understand that the principles of operation that I'm showing you for Coleman appliances will apply to any vintage pressure lamp. That was okay, let's have a quick discussion on lighting featuring the generator and the fuel and air tube. Pressure appliances use gas vapor to operate. They do not burn liquid fuel because liquid fuel does not burn. The vapor does. The way we do that is we heat our generator, which causes it to generate a fuel vapor. When the lamp is burning, the generator heat is maintained by the mantles or the stove burner. In the early days of lighting a lamp, they would use either a torch or a priming pan to preheat the generator. Now this is, I made this one, this is what a torch looked like, sort of. Uh, but what you would do with this device is you would dip it into alcohol and let it soak in there for a few minutes to absorb the alcohol. Then you would light the alcohol and then you would simply place this around the generator and let it burn. That would preheat the generator sufficiently where when you introduce fuel into the inside, it would uh, generate a fuel vapor and ignite. Now, the other one was called a priming pan. A priming pan was mostly found on stoves. Uh, there was a little pan right off to the side of the generator and you would fill that with gasoline and then light that move the generator over it and it would burn down. That same principle applies today with kerosene lamps and lanterns. Uh, this model 237, if you can see down there, is what we call a preheater cup. What you do is you fill that little cup full of alcohol, then you light that alcohol on fire and let it burn and when it's almost burned out, open the valve up and it will ignite. So about 1917, Coleman found out that if you use a thin wall brass tubing and put a loop in it, about one inch in diameter that you could actually light one of these things with matches. One of the primary objects of the present invention is to provide an exceedingly simple and thoroughly practical structure of a novel character in which the initial vaporizing action can be secured by the use of ordinary matches, thus doing away with the necessity of an alcohol torch or a means for holding a burning liquid fuel. So notice the date on that patent information. That patent brought us into the quick light era. This is a vintage Coleman quick light lantern. 
It features the Q-Burner and the now famous Q99 generator. Stamped on the back of this burner is patent date May 13th, 1919. Coleman realized that all you had to do was take a couple of matches under this loop here. It would get the generator hot enough to vaporize the fuel and you could light the lantern without needing to use a torch like this that was soaked in alcohol and then held here for a few minutes. Now, in the 1920s, the people that were working on product improvement for the Coleman Company knew something about the air that was being held above this. The fuel tanks usually contain liquid under pressure, so there is an air space above the liquid. The air in the space becomes highly impregnated with the more volatile constituents of the fuel and makes a very good fuel in the gaseous state. So what they're saying here is the air that is above here is absolutely full of vapor. And what they started working on trying to figure out was how to get that fuel vapor to assist them in starting the lamp or the lantern or the stove. Initially, they used a, a, a number of devices. They used carburetor valves that would pull the air out of there and mix it in with the uh, gas that was coming in. They also used a couple of two-stage fuel tubes that attempted to get the air mixed in with the fuel as it was coming up into the valve. In the 1930s, we transitioned from the quick light era into the instant light era. And instant light was the invention of the fuel and air tube. Now, this is a valve assembly from a 220B lantern from the 1930s. And prior to this, this tube right here was simply a hollow tube, and it was called the fuel pickup tube. And it's the same tube that you can find on kerosene lamps and lanterns today. But the fuel and air tube was quite a bit different. If I take it apart, you will see that there is a small rod inside of the fuel and air tube. This is called a metering rod, and what it does is it goes up and down inside of the fuel and air tube. At the bottom of the tube is a small hole. That is called our gas port. That is where the fuel actually enters the tube. And up near the top is called the air port. This resides in the top of the fount, up in that air gap that is highly impregnated with the more volatile constituents of the fuel. And this metering device, depending on where it is, if it is pressed down, you can see that the bottom of it sticks out the bottom of the fuel and air tube. It is virtually blocking any fuel from coming up into the tube. As it is released, fuel is allowed to enter the fuel and air tube a little faster. At the, during the entire time, air is being drawn in through the airport of the fuel and air tube. So the way this works, and you can follow along on the left side of the screen there, when the valve is closed, the valve stem is fully seated inside of the valve body. The top of the fuel and air tube metering rod is resting against the thickest part of the valve stem, which keeps it pressed down. When it is pressed down, the bottom of the metering rod will actually stick through the fuel and air tube and it will close it off. When we go to light the appliance, we turn the valve one quarter turn to light. When we do that, it opens up the valve just enough for a little bit of fuel to pass through it, but most of it is going to be that volatile air that is up at the top of the fount. Once you got the appliance burning, what you do is you open up the valve all the way. And if you look on the right side, when this happens, the top of the fuel and air tube metering rod kind of falls off the end of the conical tip of the valve stem. That allows it to raise up, and when that happens, the fuel port at the bottom of the fuel and air tube uh, opens up and more fuel is allowed to enter the valve. This is the condition we want when our appliance is burning at full brightness. So next let's talk about the generator. What does the generator do? The generator generates gas vapor from our liquid fuel. I have a couple of generators here. The one in the front is for a lantern and the one in the back is for a two burner stove. They are the same except the stove is obviously quite a bit bigger. So a generator is nothing more than a hollow tube. On the end of it, it has what we call a gas tip. And what the gas tip is, it's a very small hole and that is where the hot 
vapors will exit from and they will stream into the burner. Now on the inside of the tube we have a few things that we use to slow the fuel down as it passes through the generator and it also assists us in transferring the heat from the mantles or the burner into the generator to vaporize the fuel. On a stove it's just going to be a spring and again it slows the fuel down and it aids in the heat transfer. On a lantern if I was to pull it out you would find a piece of cardboard or some asbestos depending on the age or there may also be a small spring down in there. The other piece inside of the generator is called a tip cleaner rod. The tip cleaner rod has a very sharp needle on the end of it. You can see that. Uh, there is the same thing inside of a lantern generator, but it is much smaller. But what this does is it goes in and out of the gas tip and keeps the small orifice in the gas tip clean. Now the tip cleaner on a stove is controlled by when you turn the valve on or off, this extracts from and then goes back into the gas tip to keep it clean. On a lantern, it's a little bit different. What you have is called a tip cleaner stem. Uh, on a single mantle lantern, this is called the tip cleaner stem. You can see it over here on this 242A. And what happens is, is this stem goes up. There is an eccentric block inside of here and it pushes that tip cleaner rod up into the gas tip. And then when you turn it back down, it pulls that rod back out and the sharp tip comes out of the gas tip and fuel is allowed to flow through there. On a double mantle lantern, uh, it is a separate device and you can see as I turn it, the eccentric block goes up and down. An eccentric block is a device that turns rotational motion into linear motion. So as I rotate the tip cleaner stem, you can see the eccentric block going up and down. The end of the generator is insert it into that little hole so when it goes up it pokes through the top of the gas tip and when I pull it back down it pulls back out of the gas tip. Now in the, the early days Coleman actually made this generator. This is a vintage R55 generator and you can see that it has a tip cleaner built into it. So there is quite a difference between how fuel comes out of the tip of a generator depending if it's hot or cold. And what we'll do now is we'll go over to the bench and I'll show you a real quick experiment on what it looks like when fuel is coming out cold and when it's coming out hot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this lantern and I'm going to allow this cold generator to spit out fuel and vapor. Now most of it's going to be raw gasoline, but some of it will be the fuel vapor that comes from the fuel and air tube. And you'll be able to see that the way it burns. At the bottom of the generator, you'll see the fuel vapor burning because it'll be a blue hot flame. But then you'll also notice these big belches of yellow flames up on top. And that's the raw gas trying to vaporize and, and then burn. Uh, if you've ever improperly tried to light a Coleman stove, uh, this probably would look familiar to you because that's oftentimes what will happen. So let me grab a couple of matches here and I will light them and then we'll see how this cold generator works. So you can see at the base of it, the flame is blue. But a lot of it's yellow and that is, that is just the gasoline trying to burn. That's what a cold generator looks like. So now I'm going to turn on my propane torch and I'm going to put a low flame on it and I'm going to apply the flame to the center of the generator to duplicate what happens when we uh, get mantles burning in there. And you'll see the difference of what's coming out of the generator. Okay, you see that I have a nice low flame and I'm going to put light my matches. And now I'm going to turn this and I'm going to put it on the generator. Now the generator is getting hot and that is going to be creating a fuel vapor. And you can see the difference now. That's the difference between vapor burning and raw gasoline burning.
Okay, there are just a couple more things we need to discuss for chapter two. I want to show you the difference between a stove and a lantern and the relationship between the fuel and air tube and the tip cleaner stem. As we discussed with the lantern, when you turn the valve and open it up, you're actually operating also the fuel and air tube. You're allowing the spring to raise it up. And then when you close the valve, the fuel and air tube metering rod is being pressed back down. When you turn the tip cleaner stem up and down, what you're doing is you're sending the tip cleaner rod up and down into the gas tip of the generator to keep it clean. On a stove, it's exactly the opposite. The lever on a stove is called the lighting lever and it operates the fuel and air tube. The tip cleaner assembly on a stove is operated by opening the valve. The opening this up extracts the tip cleaner rod from the generator gas tip and opens it up. The other thing we have to worry about is how do we seal the tip cleaner and the valve stem? And the way we do that is with graphite packings. You can see here there is a graphite packing on this valve stem and on this tip cleaner stem for a single mantle lantern, you can also see that there is a graphite packing. There's a graphite packing inside of this nut for a double mantle lantern. There's graphite packing inside of here, and there's a graphite packing inside of this valve stem right here. What happens is when you tighten down this nut, doesn't matter which one it is, if you tighten down that nut, it's going to compress that graphite packing and it will seize around the shaft that is being turned and it will also expand around the outside of the nut and that is going to seal it and you will stop any leaks from happening. And that basically brings us to the end of chapter two. I hope you liked this chapter. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all the social media outlets. And again, this information can be found at oldtowncoleman.com. Until chapter three, keep them burning.